Hello lovely people, thank you so much for joining me. In this video I'll be sharing a tutorial for how I painted this iris flower as well as five bonus tips along the way. So if you want to hear all five I do encourage you to watch all the way through. You'll notice as well that I have no sped up painting footage in this video. I've made plenty of cuts of course as most of you are likely not trying to sit here for two hours, but I thought it would be relevant as well to be able to see the real-time brush strokes. So feel free to pause the video if you're painting along, and all that being said, let's get started. As you can see here, I'm working in a sketchbook. I will share information on materials used in the description box below, um, but this is a Moleskine art series sketchbook, and I'm taping down the perimeter of the page with washi tape. I find it helpful to dull the sticky side of the tape a bit by running it through my fingers once or twice before applying it to the page. This does help with a clean, peel and reveal at the end of the painting process. Next, I just use binder clips to clamp down the pages so everything stays in place and we're ready to move on to the drawing. I am including my reference photo here on the screen so you can see what I'm working from, but these steps could be applied to any flower you like. I will link this photo specifically, which I found on Pinterest, uh, if you want to try your hand at this exact flower, but feel free to apply what I'll be showing in this video to any painting you like. I am using a Pentel mechanical pencil with 0.7 millimeter graphite lead, but any pencil will do here. It's not the focus of the work, it's just really to help guide the process later on. And as you can see, I do work with a kneaded eraser. This one's from Staedtler. I prefer these over traditional erasers, but it's important to note that if you press hard into the paper with your pencil, the eraser will be less effective. So let me know in the comments if you would like to learn more about drawing specifically, um, but otherwise, let's move right along. In the drawing process, I like to work pretty loosely and with really light hand in the beginning, and then I trace over the light outlines more confidently afterwards to finalize the sketch. As far as the actual paint I'm using, it's an entry-level, non-professional, non-acrylic gouache that I'm sure you've all seen floating around on various art socials. I'll advise for those of you using high me gouache or open pot jelly gouache paint like this to try to spray down the whole palette with water before and after each use. This is helping immensely with maintenance and preventing a dried up mess as I learned the hard way. If this does happen to you though, I have a video on my channel where you can watch me revitalize this exact paint palette from a dried up unusable state, uh, which I will link. So we've arrived to the first tip of the video and it's related to color mixing. Uh, getting correct values, so how light or dark the color is, is much more important than the actual correct specific color. I would highly advise anyone painting or working in color to get a good feel for value before worrying about which specific pigments to use. As you can see, I'm making some mixes on my palette here using the included sort of darker purple shade called Violet on this packaging, as well as Prussian blue, white, and what they call a deep red. I have a variety of values from these mixes as well as some warmer and cooler shades to work with. Once I have some color mixes to work with, I go on in with a relatively large flat brush. I try to use the largest practical size um, relative to the size of the total work. And as you can see, I'm laying down basic mid-tone colors in a fairly large area, and I'm not focusing on highlights or shadows or details at this stage. You'll notice that the color on my brush is not fully uniform. Which brings us to tip number two. 
I find that when I'm painting natural subjects like landscape, flowers, and so on, that leaving your paint partially mixed rather than making a fully homogeneous mix results in a more organic feeling application. You can see some variation in hue and chroma and value in just one brush stroke, and it can be fun to take advantage of this when painting flowers in particular. Next, as you can see, I'm going in over the base color with a lighter value mix. I am going to be doing this in all the areas that need to be brightened up for this stage. And a really nice feature of this gouache is that the layers beneath will mix with whatever you're laying on top. This is something I personally enjoy as I like to mix and blend as I work, um, but it isn't everybody's preference, so it's a good thing to take note of. we move on I'll just talk a little bit about tip number three which is to not worry too much about perfection at this stage painting is a process of layering and patience so establishing your general values here where are the lights and where are the darks and worrying about the rest later is generally the way to go and everything will come with time. So as we pass through the quote unquote ugly stage, um, I would really encourage you to stay positive and, and not feel uh, discouraged by the way it looks at this point and trust the process. You can see here that I'm now going in with a dark value to bring back the shadows. This tends to help a lot with establishing the three-dimensional form of your painting, and I find that I can see a lot better after this point. Tip number four, I would say also, uh, as long as there's still white of the blank page showing through, you should err on the side of going darker than you think with your shadows. It'll all come together in the end once all of that white paper has been covered. Now you can see that I am repeating the process with the next petal. Step one, lay down the general mid-tones. Step two, bring forward the lighter areas. Step three, bring back the shadows. And at this point, you'll notice that whenever I feel like I have the right color on my brush for another area of the painting, I'll move over and lay that color down as well. My painting process is fairly intuitive, and so you will see some seemingly random brush strokes. I make these marks when it feels right and revert back to that three-step system I mentioned above when I'm not sure what to do next. When you're painting wrinkles or shapes in general, remember that light brings a form toward the eye and shadow pushes a form away. This can really help in building an illusion of three-dimensional shape convincingly. Here you can see me moving into the green section of the stem of the iris. I will encourage you to note some color theory as I make these mixes, which brings us to tip number five, which is keeping in consideration the chroma of the colors you're mixing. So we all know about adding white to lighten and dark to bring the values down, but you'll note here that I'm adding red into the mix, which might be surprising. When we work in color, we're not only working in light and dark, but also uh, how saturated or bright a color is, which is the chroma. And in this mix, I felt that the green was too bright and saturated to be convincing, and the way to dim this down is to add a little bit of the complementary color. In the case of green, this complementary color is red, and it's incidentally the color immediately opposite green 
on the color wheel. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in a video where I talk more in depth about color theory. As for how to utilize these lighter and darker colors in the painting, you can see that I am working in a similar way, finding the midtones, the light, and the shadow. And once I've roughly established the form of my entire subject, I'm moving right onto the background. This is the stage of the painting where I want to get rid of the white on the page. You'll see as you do this that once all the white is covered, all the other colors on the page make more sense, and it's much easier to find where you'd like to make some adjustments. Page is covered, you'll see me going in with brighter lights and adjusting for color in some areas. I'm fine tuning at this point and can spend as little or as much time layering on the adjustments at this stage as I want. I'll provide a final bonus tip here and suggest that you try not to spend too much time here, perhaps no longer at this stage at most than what you've spent painting thus far, but in my case I'm trying to spend much much less time. Sometimes we just need to let go here and say that we're done and just add in our final touches. In the case of the iris, it's the yellow detail on the lower petals. Since the values here are fairly dark, I'm painting them in white first before going in with the yellow. I find this helps to make them really clear and, and just pop. So here we are at the best part, the peel and reveal. I will show the first piece of tape in real time so you can see the pace at which I do this, but go slow and angle the tape back and away from the paint. This is what works for me. Let me know what you guys thought and whether you've given this a try and painted along. All told, it was about two hours of work for me. For context, uh, I would love to see what you've made and you're welcome to connect with me over on Instagram to show your work if you participated. And if any of this was helpful or relaxing or satisfying to watch, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks again for watching and be well.